Hello everyone, this is exciting. I am glad you have tuned in and I am here and some friends are here too. We are excited, but uh, my subject tonight is the Holy Spirit. And I'm in awe and trembling because, but this is one of the most exciting times I've had. Because, you know, I study and I study, but this time it came real easy. <laughs> of course, my husband has done some teachings and I had a printout there, but I, there's so much in this Holy Spirit. So um, I started out in the New Testament and then I thought, no, he was here in the Old Testament too. Yes, I thought, I got to look here. Hello. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Our friends are here and they are saying hello to We are blessed. Okay, I'm going to start out with prayer because my subject is the Holy Spirit. And I am glad you are here. And he is here. So we are thrilled. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, that your presence is here in this room, and it's in the, our, our temple, this temple, that you are here. So in, in, in awe and trembling, I say, oh God, oh Holy Spirit, guide me everything I say, everything I say that you are inside me, and I will listen to you. And I invite you to interrupt me anytime you want to. And even my friends here interrupt me. I don't want to go off. I want to go uh, stick with the word of God. And so I thank you, Holy Spirit, um, that you are so gracious, so wonderful. I'm just without words of how to describe how you are, how loving and kind and gracious Merciful and and um, how you've been you have striven with strive. Uh, you never gave up on me, and you've been so kind, so gracious. And, um, I I run out of words to say, but I'll start here. So I thank you, I thank you, and I thank everybody that is tuned in today. That this will be a blessing to you. And um, it'll stir you up to do some more studying on the Holy Spirit and being open. So, um, like I say, I started in the New Testament because I thought, oh, John the Baptist talked about the Holy Spirit. And so I got a bunch of notes here. And in and, 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 and John 14, 15, 16, lots of notes. And uh, then I got my Spirit-filled life Bible. And I just looked in the concordance to do the you can look in the concordance and find the word spirit, and then you can find out a lot of things. There are like a whole page on the spirit because he'd been around for a long time. In fact, at the beginning of creation, he was there. He was there when God said, let us make man in our image. But then even before that, in Genesis 1, 2, and the Spirit of God was moving on the face of the waters. The Spirit of God was hovering over the, the, the face of the waters. And can, can you see them? I'm saying, Lord, open our eyes that we can see uh, the magnificence of your power. You were there, Holy Spirit. You were looking. And then, like I say, uh, Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our image. It's not God's image, but it's our image. And the Holy Spirit is in the image of God Almighty. And then, let's see, then we came to uh, Genesis 6, verse 13. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Um, it's like... Oh, he was disappointed. God is looking down there at, at man. He said, my spirit shall not always strive. Of course, because man's um, mind was only evil continually. And God said, I don't know why I made him. I'm going to do something. And, you know, he sent the flood. But he was gracious because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and his family. But it, it just tells us that the spirit can be grieved. And so I do this in fear and trembling. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for that Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you later in John 14, he said, it's in us. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit came to live in your mortal flesh. Along with Jesus and the Father, 
all one together. And so now, now with this assignment, I'm going to talk about what he's doing, what his assignment is, what he does, and um, how he's grieved. And uh, just, uh, just, I'm almost without words to describe how wonderful this Holy Spirit is. But then still in the Old Testament, I want to go back there. There's so many examples. You can even think of them. Of Samson and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and how the Spirit was there. And he was watching. Even Job talks about the Spirit. This is a long time ago. Job was, maybe that story of the book of Job was like three, 2,000 years before Christ. I mean, he talks about his Redeemer. But then in the book of Ezekiel, this is the good one, it says, Ezekiel 36, 20, uh, 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and will keep my and you will keep my judgments and do them. So he said he's going to take out our stony heart and put his spirit in us. Give us a spirit of flesh. And I say, thank you, Lord Jesus. You had a destiny for me. I was a thought in your mind, God, uh, before the foundation of the world. And um, that each of us had a destiny. The spirit of God was hovering over us before we were born even like oh i've heard other one who was it kim clement say you, when you were born on one side was the spirit of god and the other side was the devil <laughs> he was trying they're fighting for you the minute you were born because god it was there because of the generational thing of our parents prayed but maybe they didn't pray for you but god's spirit he had a destiny for you in heavenly places he had this for you. So I don't know, maybe for the Old Testament, but now into the New Testament. You know, you can think John the Baptist talked about the Holy Spirit, didn't he? He said, oh, as for me, I baptize you with the water for repentance. This is Matthew 3, 11. We're in the New Testament now. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming is mightier than I and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And I think, oh God, oh God. But that isn't the end of what John the Baptist says, because he's already talking about what this Holy Spirit is going to do. And his winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor. And he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So I think, wow, the Holy Spirit has a big assignment there. And, uh, you know, he's watching over us, and he's grieved. He, 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 he loves us because he got an assignment, and the, the angels hovering over us, too. Even when we were born, those angels were hovering over us. Okay, so this is the Holy Spirit. There is winnowing fork. Winnowing fork, what is that? When they thresh the wheat, they had the wind would blow the sh chaff away. And then um, the good part would last, would stay. He will early clear his threshing floor and he will gather his wheat into the barn. Oh, thank you, God, that I was called and I was chosen. I was before the foundation of the world, God had me in mind. How awesome is that? That Holy Spirit was there at creation, hovering over the, over the waters. Oh, God. And then Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And for, for us, too, we have a calling on our lives. He, God has, and the Holy Spirit knows about this. And he's going to help us perform what God has assigned to us. Okay, now let's go to John 14. This is, you probably will be able to understand this, or, you know, as we're in the New Testament. John 14, if you overseas, you can find this, because maybe you don't understand my English that well. 
anyway, even last week, let me just uh, say last week I talked about, or um, the week before, about the everlasting uh, Father. I emphasized that, and I got to John 14, and I said, in the book, in the chapter of John 14, Jesus mentions the Father 22 times. Oh, you don't take my word for it if you want to read that, because he was showing me, I need to know more about my Father. But now he's moved me on. Now I need to know about, more about the Holy Spirit. So, okay, here we are in John 14. Uh, he says, um, verse 16, 14, verse 16, And I will ask the Father, this is Jesus talking to his disciples, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever, that is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not behold him and know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. So I want to just talk about that word, another helper. And I did some other looking on this. It means talk uh, similar, one besides me, but similar to me in operation, but just like me is what Jesus is explaining to his disciples. He said, don't be sad, I'm leaving you. I, I will send you someone who's just like me. He will do in my absence what I would do if I were with you. That's what he's meaning. He's meaning, oh, and it, 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 it's good for you that I go away because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit won't come. Now, we know there are other names of the Holy Spirit. He was comforter, wasn't he? And Isaiah, what was that, five or six or whatever, four or six, four. Um, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Comforter. Um, uh, let's see, his name shall be called Comforter, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. So we know that he is a comforter, but that's not his complete name. It's Holy Spirit. Oh, but he is with us, an everlasting father. And then I just want to say he's symbolized by fire. That's what John the Baptist said, didn't he? He's symbolized by fire, by wind. Remember when the... Uh, disciples at the day of Pentecost, they were there in the upper room and they felt a wind come. Maybe some of you have felt that, haven't you? I have at times. Uh, how about water? Another symbol. Water. Have you been baptized in the water? Washed away. He's symbolized by water. And seal. You know about a seal that the, the, the uh, 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 leaders used to have a, a, a seal on the tomb and on the documents, but the Holy Spirit had put a seal in our hearts. A seal, meaning, hey, watch out, devil. And I think of that too, watch out, devil. I got the seal of the Holy Spirit on my heart. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. Okay, another one, oil. He's symbolized by oil. Oil. Oh, remember, hey, you've heard about the oil that comes out of the Bible, that has been running out of the Bible, and they collect it, and we've gotten some samples of it. Oh, can oil. Okay, and then you remember the dove, the Holy Spirit that came on John the Baptist and on Jesus at um, the Transfiguration. The dove came on him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And a dove. Have you ever seen a dove? <laughs> Sometimes at, at some opportune Mona, I know I was in another country one time and the window was open and a dove came on and sat on that open window and I was, I was so thrilled to see that dove, and he cocked his head and he turned around, and I was remembered in Song of Solomon, it says, you have dove's eyes. Song of Solomon, remember that? He said, you have dove's eyes. And I thought, oh, Lord, I'd like to see a dove. And sure enough, 
there I was in Burma in the panhandle somewhere and I have an open window there because they didn't have the windows. Um, they had screens on the window, but the screen was gone. And sure enough, a duff came in and sat there and he goes and like this and he goes like that, you know, because they don't have peripheral vision. But he, the, they, and, and in Song of Solomon, the spirit is saying, you have dove's eyes, and I, that you're looking straight at God. And I thought, well, I really don't. <laughs> I'm looking around to me. But in the Song of Solomon, it says, you have dove's eyes. So I thank you, Lord. I'm declaring over you that you have dove's eyes. Even as it says in Song of Solomon, that uh, I know myself, I am not on Jesus at all times. I'm praying, Lord, help this Holy Spirit in me. Give me dove's eyes that I will concentrate on him. I'm not be distracted by the world. Of course, I need, I'm living in the world. I got to buy groceries. I got to go to the store. I got to do the washing. Anyway, okay, let's go back. Okay, I told you, let's see. And then, let's see, let's go on. I said, ask the Father to give you another helper. I talked about it. I talked about the symbols. Now let me be with you forever. Hallelujah. But you know, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can not listen to him. And, um, you know, I was taught in my traditional church that no one can pluck you out of God's hands. And that was some um, not complete teaching. Because we can resist the Holy Spirit. If we keep resisting the Holy Spirit, he will leave us. He will leave us. He wants to stay, but we have to welcome him. We got to listen to him. Warning. Okay, but he will stay with you forever. He's going to be there. And I think of many times when I was a teenager, I didn't listen to the Holy Spirit, but he didn't let me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, and you've probably been that way too. Um, the Holy Spirit, verse 17, the world cannot receive because it does not behold him or know him. But you know him. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. But you know him, and I declare that to you, all of you who are listening in. I declare you know him. Otherwise, you wouldn't be tuned in here. You wouldn't be wanting to hear about the Holy Spirit. But you know him, I declare. And you do not want to grieve him. And he's been with you. He's been helping you all of these years. He's been a, a dealing with you, and he will continue, I believe, dealing with me. And, and, and just stir me up because he's in my heart here. But, you know, so many of us, well, whenever you do something wrong, he's going to convict you. And I think he's going to deal with me. But he still loves me. He loves me. And I got an advocate there who is defending me before the throne an advocate, and you do too. That Holy Spirit, as we'll get on here, what his job is. Uh, let's see, verse 18, uh, 14, verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you after a little while, and the world behold me no more. But you will behold me because I live. You shall live also. Uh, in that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Yes, oh, so we are three. We're in the Father, we're Jesus, and we're in the Holy Spirit, and he is in us. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go on here. And then in, uh, let's see. I said he can be grieved. He can be lied to remember Ananias and Sapphira. You know, they lied to the Holy Spirit, and oh, wow, they fell down dead. Ah. Uh, and then they can be blasphemed. Remember, we can grieve. You know, some people you've heard, oh, I don't know if I've lost my salvation. Uh -uh -uh. Maybe I've blasphemed him. Well, that means that the Holy Spirit is dealing with you and the Spirit is in you. But if you continually say bad things about the Holy Spirit and resist him, he will leave you. He does not want to. He is very grieved, very grieved. And he will deal with you. Maybe somebody else is going to pray for you. Your parents or some friends going to see. 
oh, oh, because I have a friend now. I think she's deceived. And it's like, these are going to happen in these last days that we can be deceived. That's why we, we need to have fellowship in a church among other believers. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to lose our salvation. Um, but God has restrictions, and this Holy Spirit can be de uh, grieved. This is in Ephesians, Ephesians 4, verse 30. It says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. There is a seal on my heart. Oh, thank God. I want you to see you have a seal on your heart, dear friend. It's a total gift. Nothing we have deserved. It's only because someone prayed for us because we were in God's mind at the beginning of creation, before creation. Because, you know, even before creation, our redemption was taken care of. He died to set us free. When Adam and Eve sinned, that was not the end of it. God let us say, oh, now i got to do plan B. No, it was already planned that we would be set apart for godly purposes. But we don't want to grieve him, so it says we can. Like, I just want to say the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not just a wind, not just a, a thing. And that's what the Lord was stirring me up. Like, I can say, Holy Spirit, sit beside me in the car. Sometimes I say, oh, Father, I want you to sit beside me. Or Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. You follow me all around. But then the Holy Spirit, like, I want to listen. I want to listen. I don't want to think my own thoughts. I want to listen. I don't want to grieve you by whom you were sealed. So you know what happens if we grieve the Holy Spirit. He leaves. There are our own devices like, uh-oh, uh-oh, and we make some wrong decisions. We make a wrong turn in the road, or we think, oh, or we give in to the flesh, don't we, huh? Oh, we eat something we shouldn't be eating, or we go somewhere we shouldn't be going, where the, the or we watch something on TV and like like the spirit says, Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, but we were sealed. Sealed. There is this seal on and then oh my time goes fast. He possesses the characteristics of the Godhead. Is this is the Holy Spirit, is eternal. He's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere present. He's omnipotent, completely powerful. And omniscient means he knows everything. He knows. Weren't you surprised he knew about some of those things when you were a child? And he brought them back, back to me. Oh, that was really stupid. <laughs> those things, those talks I had as a child. But God, you were so good to me. You were so good to me. He knew all about those things. And he knew just how to get to me. Just how to get to me. Like, oh, you forgave me. Oh, you never let me go. You were so good to me. So good to me when I did not obey you. But you you went away, and I made some bad decisions, but you never left me alone. You knew how to get to me. You knew what was in my thought process. And you knew uh, what circumstances would appeal, would get right to me since a child. Sometimes that's so awesome, isn't it, friends? All-powerful. Everywhere present. He knows everything about you. You know, I've gone through crowds, maybe in India or overseas, and you see all those people. I think, God, you know all those people? You know all of their thoughts, what they are thinking about, and you know how to get to them? You know their language? You know how somebody to put in their path? That just boggles my mind. He knows everything. Uh, that's like a, what, a mass computer, but yet it's not. It's like, oh, God is so good. Okay, then he wants to fill you with his power and keep you from being deceived. 
He wants to keep you from being deceived. Am I really starting out the day like, oh God, I want you to guide my footsteps. In fact, just a while ago, I've been praying and and concerned about something I kind of taught on Matthew 6, 6, where, you know, go out and, and shut the door and your father who knows you, knows what you do. Matthew 8, because I don't know what I need. I just know I need eye salve so I can see better. But he's going to tell me what I need. So I thank you, Jesus, that's the work of the Father. But then the work of the Holy Spirit is going to tell me. Tell me how I can not accomplish that because I can't do it on my own. I am totally incapable. And he wants me to come to that part. Like I've been reading him. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth and his book and I thought oh look at how those miracles Smith Wigglesworth oh it's like he would just speak the word and tremendous miracles would happen tremendous tremendous how how in the world but he always carried his bible with him or his new testament with him and reading and reading and reading and speaking that and he would just show up and people would be convicted and I thought Oh, God, I, I, I would like more of that power. But God is doing a new thing. I believe this revival is coming as my heart is tender toward the unbelievers. Tender. He's going to change my heart. Give me a heart of compassion. Because Smith Wigglesworth said, Oh, well, you got to be broken. And I think, okay, God, uh, I made no mistakes. and I, But uh, break me. Break me that I will... And on you totally totally I am surrendered I am surrendered because Smith Wiggles would say Wigglesworth oh yeah he got sick sometime and he just he just used the word of God used the word of God and he used the word of God and I think yes that's what I want to do that's what I want to do keep using the word of God because we each have a job to do an assignment in these last days these are the last days dear ones you have an assignment. There's a book in heaven with your assignment. God wants you to help you in that assignment. We're not like Smith Wigglesworth, but we're different. It's a different age. But I thank you, Lord Jesus. You're going to give us wisdom how to bring the lost in. Change my heart because that's what Smith Wigglesworth used to say. He said, Unless you've gone to some trials, you, you, you don't have the empathy. You don't have the compassion. Unless you've gone some, through some brokenness and some trials of your own, I think, God, God, I submit. Guide me by your spirit. I want to listen to your spirit. I don't want to grieve you. I want to accomplish asked me to do and then I can be in agreement and we have friends here that have taught about the kingdom of God and I keep remembering but the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking but it's righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Spirit like we've been redeemed from darkness we are a new creature we're in a new kingdom and people outside of that kingdom are dying and they're hopeless, and they try other things to fill that empty spot, but Jesus can do that, and that's the work of the Holy Spirit to guide me, to help me have this compassion in my heart that I'm not judgmental, that there isn't this pride that rises up, but the Holy Spirit there. Oh, I want to just go into a little bit more about this. Let's see, 1426. Father will send my name to teach you all things and bring to, bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Mm, and then John 15, 26. When the helper comes whom I send to you from thy father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds. He will testify about me. So this is the work of the Holy Spirit to testify about Jesus. And Jesus always testified about the father, didn't he? And they would say, we're all one. And Jesus said, I'm in you, and the Father is in you. We're one together, and then the Holy Spirit. Wow, what more could we ask, dear friends? To be 
filled. And you know, I've taught other times. You've heard other teachings on the filling of the Holy Spirit. In fact, a woman came over yesterday, wanted the filling of the Holy Spirit. And uh, there's so much we have taught on it. You've got other things you can find out. Um, but the Spirit of Truth, He will testify about me, he will bring to my remembrance. I say, I have a clear mind. My memory is not going, my mind is clear. I can remember what the Holy Spirit told me. Uh, and then and just these last few verses, John 16, 8 through 15, when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness and judgment. So it's the world. He's going to convict the world. That's what his job is. Concerning sin, that's John 16, 8 through 15, because they do not believe in me, and concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me, and concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. So sometimes, you know, even in the past I feel, oh, I've been so bad, I've been so bad. But it's just like, no, the Holy Spirit is in me, and Jesus is interceding for me. That's his job. Uh, Hebrews 7.25, he ever lives to make intercession for me. I don't need to feel so guilty all the time. But then I remember, have you heard this thing that your thoughts are louder in heaven than your words on earth? That's not in the scripture, but anyway, I think Neville Johnson said that and we had that. Your thoughts in heaven are loud. So you can just remember that my thoughts in heaven are loud. My thoughts in heaven. So I can I can choose. Am I going to go on that line of thought? Or am I going to just say, oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for showing me. Oh, that was not a good thought. That was not from you. And don't feel con condemned. Oh, you're, you're so wicked. You keep on doing it. No, it's the Holy Spirit. He loves you. And Jesus always intercedes for you. And there are more verses in Romans 8. So anyway, there's so much more I could go into. And you know this thing's in the Old Testament too about the Spirit. But I'm going to say now, I'm going to um, just confess to you uh, that you are going to be listening. I am listening to the Holy Spirit. And, and God will be pleased. He's pleased. He's poured out. He chose us before the foundation of the world that we should walk in righteousness and justice. For that's the foundation of his throne. Chosen us. Washed us clean. And by his grace, uh, his spirit is strengthening us. His spirit, I say, is strengthening us. And his love is poured out in our hearts by the spirit. Oh, we have a choice. So thank you, Lord. I declare over you uh, that you will be stronger Today, every day, you are stronger because you are proclaiming God's word. That sickness cannot come on you. Every little um, tweak you have, every little thing of pain, it has to go away in the name of Jesus because the Spirit of God lives in us. We will perform what God has asked us to do. We will not grieve the Holy Spirit because he is with us to help us help us he's pleased so i declare he's pleased with you dear friends he has a great destiny for you he's going to be using you for these last days and you are strengthened by the spirit of god and you know how to be filled with the holy spirit we are filled with the spirit so i bless you and everybody here in this room is in agreement we are blessing you wherever this goes over the world that the holy spirit will hover over you and bless you and keep you in righteousness and your family and your family. And no sickness will come nigh your dwelling. No sickness will. And he's given you a new heart to love him and serve him. So I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I put the angels around you to guard you and protect you, keep you walking in righteousness. So bless you. Thank you, thank you, dear friends. We send love to you and let us know anything we can pray about. We are here on Facebook and we'll put this on YouTube tomorrow by the grace of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Yes, we are here, hallelujah, in a